Hi, I am making a video that I told y'all that I've been doing workshops for that I would try to put up. So this is going to be a quick tutorial, um, if you can even call it that, on how to study the Bible. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how I do this. Um, here's my main thing. The Word is for you. You figure out how this works for you. You kind of change it up and you make it so that you can learn from it. The same Holy Spirit in me is in you. And the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the word to us. So at the beginning of anything, um, every single time you start, you need to start with asking the Holy Spirit to teach you to be the one to reveal the word to you because without the Holy Spirit, it's just a book. Um, I really like to talk about the fact that if you, I read Gone with the Wind every single summer and I have for like 10 years because I love it, but there's nothing in Gone with the Wind that surprises me anymore. It is a book, something that I can know and memorize. Um, there's not a part that I'm like, that is absolutely brand new. I just don't even feel like it was there the last time I um, read Gone with the Wind. But um, with the Bible, it's completely different. You see, the Bible is written outside of linear time. And at first you're like, what in the world does that mean? Well, linear time is from beginning to end. We have a birth and we have a death. Linear time... Um, it says that there's a one straight line, right? Well, the Bible is written outside of that. God is not a God who is underneath linear time. He is above it. So he is writing this word from outside of our time, meaning that the word is for what was, what is, and what is to come. It's a fascinating thing, and it's when you really start realizing this Bible is living. Because I've been studying the Word, and I would say I was a student of the Word since I was about 15 years old. And um, every single morning, I wake up and I get into this, and the Holy Spirit meets me here, and I start seeing things I've never seen before. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not talking about the immutability of the Bible. I'm talking about this Bible is alive. It is living word and no longer, it does not matter how long you study it. It will continue to speak. It will continue to reveal deeper and deeper. The word actually says the spirit searches the, the um, depths of God. And if we believe that, we believe that it's so much more than black and white letters. There is living word in here. And who does um, John 1 tell us the word is? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the, God, the Word was with God. The Word is Jesus Christ. He literally is speaking to us through this. This is the manna that God spoke of um, in Deuteronomy and in Exodus, that every morning you're going to have to gather it. Every morning you're going to have to go get, get it for yourself. And did you notice when he was teaching that, to the Israelites that even the children gathered for themselves because no one can gather this for you. On Sunday morning, it's awesome to go to church and it's biblical and the Lord wants us to be in fellowship, but your pastor cannot be the one that gathers for you. He is giving you a word. He's teaching you depth in here. But if you are not gathering for yourself, then you are not eating the manna. And part of the manna concept it was so important um, was that manna had to be gathered every morning by yourself and that only enough for that day because if you didn't in the morning the word says it turned to worms because if you don't eat this thing if you don't digest it for yourself if you don't consume your daily amount of it it turns to worms and you might be thinking mm, had my Bible sitting there for a long time and it did not turn to worms but the concept is if you don't eat it, if you don't digest it, it turns to worms because it will be judgment upon you. And it's an amazingly beautiful thing because it turns to death if you do not allow the word to change you, for then it becomes judgment upon you. So I really believe in this. Another concept that I want to tell you before we start into this is we have 
almost circled back to a medieval state of having to study the word. And you let me break that down for you. During the medieval times, it was told to people that it was only for the priest um, to read the word and then they would communicate it to you, um, to the common man, to you and me, right? Um, and so the common man did not read the word. You get a lot of people that start saying, mm, I believe the word is for the people. And it's fascinating to go look in history and see what occurred during those time periods. But people sacrificed greatly to bring this word into a language where you and I could read it. Um, that was the plan of God. But I would almost argue we've entered there again. We are back into a medieval state with the word. Because of this, we have this word so readily available, more readily available than any time in history, right, is the word of God. You can have it in your pocket, you can have it in your, in your cell phone, but people don't read it. They wait until they get a Bible study written by an amazing author, and there's nothing wrong with these um, authors. They are hearing from Jesus and helping us understand the word, but they cannot be the vessel through which you hear the Holy Spirit. And, and they can be it for a time or for a moment or a Sunday morning, but they cannot be the primary vessel through which you communicate and hear the Holy Spirit speak to you in Scripture. So I just want to stretch us to be women, be people who seek after God and believe that He is speaking as much to a famous writer or author or to our pastor on Sunday, he speaks as much to them as he does to you, or as much to you as he does to them, if we are willing to meditate upon his word, to be obedient and disciplined disciples, and to abide in him. Abiding in the word is so much more than just let, letting ourselves just be like, okay, I'm kind of trying to do this thing. Abiding is digging. And I want to help you to dig into the word for yourself, to hear the Lord, because I believe it's a discipline that the church is really hurting in right now. And so we're back to that medieval state where we feel like we need um, a certain author to tell us what the book of Jonah says, or we need a certain person to tell us what they say. But here's, and, and those things are good. Please don't misunderstand me. They're good. But... It's, it's our personal responsibility to be in the Word ourselves as well. And we need to get back to learning and discipling people on how to learn and dig into the Word for themselves. So I, I'd love for you to join me and um, on how to study the Bible. I'm going to just do a really quick little tutorial on what works for me and how I dig into the Word. And um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and email me or put them below in the comment section. But I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to His people. And I believe that we all have the same Spirit, Holy Spirit. And that if you are willing to go deep, the Lord will meet you there. He does not leave us as orphans. He does not leave us a God who does not speak. He is a God who speaks. And so come join me. We'll go through a couple tutorial tutorials tutorials, and uh, we'll look at digging into this further.